Okay, so let's start with AJ Allmendinger. And I got and look, I'm sorry you guys that we did not talk about this and we were not available on Monday or Tuesday. I wish we were. Because I took AJ at 80 to 1. I could not believe that I was able to get AJ Allmendinger at 80 to 1. So now he's 40 to 1. Now, I don't know. I haven't looked at the odds in the last few hours, so they might have changed. So again, these odds, and every sports book's going to be a little bit different anyway. But AJ is 40, still 40 to 1, I still think is a pretty good bargain. But I was able to get 80 to 1. Uh, and you look at you see three top fives and 21 all time at Daytona, and that's not all that great. But average finish of 9.8 over his last six races at Daytona. On top of that, last year, not good in his last, should be in his last race. Okay, last August, the last time he raced at Daytona, he finished 29th. But before that, his previous five, his average was six. So that 29th last August moved his average to 9.8 over six. It was 6.0 out of five with five top tens and two top fives. On top of that, he, the, the reason he's gotten so much better lately in Cup is because he got so much better lately in Xfinity. And the car... The cars, I, I, look, I can say the cars made a difference in Cup, but I'm not so sure it made too much of a difference in Xfinity, but whatever the case may be. AJ, four top fives in, Xfin in six Xfinity Series races, including four straight top fives um, from 21 to 22. So from 2021 to 2022, he had top fives. And... All that's telling me is, by the way, he doesn't have a win. So that's 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 the negative. But you're still getting 40 to 1, and he's without question going to be a part of my picks. Okay, next up, Christopher Bell, my pick to win the championship this year. Of course, you know my pick last year was my boy Ryan Blaney. And I don't know if you noticed. Let me back out of here. I don't know if you guys know, but there it is. All right, I had to get it. I mean, it wasn't expensive, but I had to get something in quick. So there it is. Now, maybe I will splurge for an even better Ryan Blaney. I know they're out there, but I mean, come on. This was what an incredible year season it was for me covering that, especially late, how it all transpired. It was just so awesome. But we're not talking about Blaney. We're talking about Bell because Blaney was my pick for the championship last year. And you might say, oh, you're a homer. You're going to pick him again. No, he's not even in my top four. This year. I didn't even pick him for the championship four this year. So it was just, I, I just really have, and and the proof was in the pudding. I just knew the kid had it in him. And I, I was, I, I had been saying that for five years. Said the kid had all the talent that Chase Elliott has. In my mind. Difference were the teams. And I just knew eventually, and the year before, remember, it was the team just wasn't good and they weren't picking them up. But this past year, the team finally picked them up. And he put it all together and the timing was perfect and the track was perfect. The way it worked at, at, at Phoenix was awesome. It was a great experience and I'll never forget it. But Christopher Bell's my pick to win the championship this year. As far as this race, he's 22 to 1 and he only has one top five and eight appearances at Daytona. But that was third in this race last year. So that's a good sign for Christopher Bell this week. And you're getting 22 to 1, which is not a bad number. He did lead 20 laps in the race last year. There are so many other options, though, that it's one of those decisions you're just going to make. You know, because there's the, the odds are going to range from 10 to 1. I mean, there are so many drivers that are like between 10 to 1 and 60 to 1. It's just amazing. And, and, and of course, you know that we get this only at these tracks, Daytona and Talladega. But that's why it's, it, it, it can be difficult to predict who's going to win, which is why you have to usually double your wagers in these types of races. If you make five picks a week, well, when the Daytona races and the Talladega races come around, you, you better double that. Ten. And that's where you go ahead and make a few extra picks. And Christopher Bell could be one of them. Next up is my boy, Ryan Blaney. 12 to 1. Now, he's not the favorite. So believe it or not, I believe he's like the fifth choice. Co-fourth or fifth choice. Which I don't understand, but 
Uh, maybe it's just because he only has one win at Daytona. We all know that Ryan Blaney right now is the king of the, let's just say the super speedways. He is, now he could have a co-king, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, but nobody's better right now than Ryan Blaney on these tracks. Nobody. So to get him as the fourth or fifth choice is not bad, even though it's 12 to 1, a short number, but it's not 4 to 1, it ain't 5 to 1, it's still a solid number. And you have to take Ryan Blaney. You just have to. Anytime you're at Talladega or Daytona. And again, he does have a win that was back in 2021, but he does not have a Daytona 500 win. Next up, Alex Bowman. Can Alex Bowman come back after what happened last year? Both Bowman and Elliott, the teammates, can they return? Especially now they weren't on the, on the same level, but they, they both were at a certain level before last year. Can they get back to that level that they were in 2022? And before that, Bowman, 28 to 1. That's not a bad number, actually, because, and you might go, yeah, but he only has one top five and 15. All right, but take a look at where he was last year. Fifth and sixth in both races. Once again, he got good odds. And his average out of 15 races, his results, his finishes, 16.1. That's pretty good. So Alex Bowman is a pretty, is, is underrated in these races. And I definitely would play Bowman because of those odds. Chase Briscoe. Now, Briscoe is a definite one. He's got to be on the short list for comeback drivers. He had such a bad go at it last year. Uh, there were a lot of reasons. You remember what they were. You're, you're going to start off, though, in this race at 40 to 1, a big number. But look, he only has one top five out of the six, and he has four wrecks. Some of it's luck, but until he kind of can get on a little bit of a run, which I think still happens. Look, look, some drivers are just going to be better than other drivers on, on super speedways like this. That's just, You know that's the fact. But other drivers just need more experience. Briscoe could be one of those guys because look at the bottom sentence. Okay? He led 67 laps from the pole in the last Daytona race. And that is definitely something to consider. Now, if he could stay four wrecks out of six, not good. But look, I, I haven't. Done, I haven't done a deep dive to find out how many times it was his fault, was it luck, but that's that info from last August gives me a little bit of, you know what? We're, remember, let's go back to this. What did, we, what did we post here? The last three Daytona 500 winners were Ricky Stenhouse, Austin Sindrick, and Michael McDowell. Next up is Chris Buescher, and I feel really good about Chris Buescher because if you've been following us for years, you know I was on, I was on board with Buescher a couple of years ago, a couple of years early. Uh, I picked him on my fantasy team a couple of years ago, went with him again early on. I think I'm not sure if I picked him when the season began, but I remember one of the two years I got him early in the year. I think it was last year when I got him earlier in the year, and then rode with him the whole year. Uh, fact is, I really felt that there was something there. I don't, but I don't think there's another gear though. I think what he did last year is, I think that's what Chris Buescher can do. I think that could be the driver that we'll see now moving on. Respectable, uh, maybe win a couple times a year. Maybe he can get to the final eight to give him a chance to get to the championship four. Not sure he's a championship driver yet, but CJ believes he could be. And uh, he is um, this, uh, CJ's official sleeper for the champ for the uh, NASCAR Cup Series this year. He's sixteen to one in this race. He's got five top fives and a win in sixteen, which is really solid. He's got that win coming off the very last race at Daytona in August in the Coke Zero Sugar Four Hundred, even though it wasn't a dominant win. So keep that in mind. He only led two laps in that race, and. If I have to, let me see if I can get an exact number of, let's see. No, I went the wrong way on that one. I'm going to try to get the exact number of laps that Busher's led. 44 at Daytona. So not a whole lot. All right. Anyway. And the other thing, too, is it's 16 to 1. 
See, I, I, I think he, I think he's deserving to be sixteen to one. He's a good driver at Daytona and Talladega. This is the type of races that Busher can do well at. But uh, I don't know. Back to back wins, consecutive wins. That's gonna be really hard. Next up, Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch uh, was my favorite driver for a very long time until Ryan Blaney took over. And it's not like I'm still not a big Kyle Busch fan because I am. It's just that at some point, you know, the old the driver gets old and you got to look for the new young guy. And that's what I did. And I really just started to like Blaney. It's very similar to my college basketball or my college sports, the way I root between everybody sees that I'm a big uh, Rutgers. I should be, yeah, Rutgers and Michigan fan. How can you do that? But, but, well, it's because Rutgers is my home. Michigan was the, the team I grew up with. I mean, you don't grow up rooting for Rutgers. Nobody knew anything about Rutgers, even if you were in New Jersey like I was. But when I ever rooted one against the other, I always went with the underdog, Rutgers, because they needed it. And that's what I did with Blaney, is that I equally loved both of them, but Blaney was the guy I rooted for because he was the underdog. He's not the underdog anymore, so that would be interesting. But anyway, Kyle Busch is the co-favorite at 10-1. to 1. This is only because of one reason. He's never won a Daytona 500. And that is not a good reason to make him a co-favorite. Okay, this is not another sport where, hey, yeah, I know he's going to be focused for this because he's never won it. it. There's so much luck we all know that goes into this. But remember, Kyle was really strong last year. And there's a lot that should go into that because I, I had him last year as a top pick. And we all know that if the race would have ended on 500 laps, he probably wins the race. But it didn't. They went the extra couple of laps. He wasn't able to hold on. He got screwed again. Look, some great drivers have never won the 500 before. So, and he's 10 to 1. It's a low number. Overall, you know, he's got decent stats there, but just a one win and no 500s. And look, the last nine average is solid. I'm not saying I'm not taking him because I do believe you should take him. But I think you should only take them to try to get your money back. William Byron is next. And Byron is getting 18-1. to 1. That's not bad. But that's because he's not all that great at Daytona. Two top fives. He's got the win back. Uh, actually, where was that win? Do I have that here? Yeah, 2020. And uh, Byron has wrecked, as you can see, seven times in 12 races. That, that's why his average is 24.7. So, no, I am not going to consider William Byron this week. Ross Chastain. Now, Eric and I both have the same feeling about Ross Chastain, that he is uh, going to be a really good pick. Uh, and, and, and his prob as a matter of fact, we have our new futures uh, model this year where we can now, in the past, we could whatever we wanted every week. It was every week, all season long, 100 buck minimums, whatever you want. And it was just, I was at, and with the way things are going now, I just felt, you know what, that was just too, too crazy. Let's just kind of make it a little bit more easier for us and also, you know, and, and have it more easier to follow. So each of us have $1,000 to spend on the season for our futures. We have $100 minimum on drivers, meaning we can, we can do 10 drivers and that's it if we want to do $100 on each driver. And we can make a futures prediction anytime between now and the week before the big race in Phoenix. I've already invested two two of uh, uh, two hundred out of my eight out of my thousand, so I only have eight hundred left. And I did it on Kyle Busch at fourteen to one, and Ross Chastain at eighteen to one. Um, and my reasoning is pretty simple: I got a thousand dollars to spend. If Kyle Busch or Ross Chastain win right now, and whatever I do with the other 800, let's say I throw it all away on other drivers, I still will make money if one of these two drivers win. That's, that's my feeling. And so I, I'm going with the bargains early, Chastain and Busch. But we both like Chastain, Eric and I. Eric has Chastain winning the championship this year. I have Chastain as my sleeper to win the championship this year. And... He's 28 to 1 to win, to win this race, though. Completely different than winning a championship. Because look at that. He's never had a top five. 
He he has an Xfinity Series win at Daytona, but he's never come close in the Cup Series. Austin Sindrick, Mr. 2022 Daytona 500 champ, uh, has another top five out of five, so he's been pretty strong, 30 to one. But can he win two 500s in six races? I kind of doubt it. Big year for him, though. Big year for Sindrick. Next up is Dylan, 30 to one. Another must play. Austin Dillon is really good at these tracks. Now he has two wins, uh, including the, the 2018 Daytona 500. And to me, it's similar. Dillon is like, like if I had a, if I, if I was picking uh, several drivers where I know I'm going to take no matter what, I'm going to get good odds on them every, at these races all the time. It's going to be Stenhouse, Dillon, and AJ. AJ, especially at Daytona. AJ, Dillon, and Stenhouse because of the odds. And 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 how good they could be at this uh, track. Dylan has nine top tens, four top fives, and two wins in eighteen races. Fifty percent of the time in Daytona, Austin Dillon's in the top ten. That will give you a chance to win. He has the two wins, the Daytona five hundred win as well. And um, let's see, last year though was pretty bad because he wrecked both times. So maybe he's he's either due to get out of that or. This is a run that you kind of because he. I tell you right now, if he wrecks again, then, then I stay away from him until I see something positive. I don't. I wouldn't want to get into that. But in the, and keep in mind too, in the Xfinity series, he's raced ten times, seven top fives, and a win. So it's not just the Cup series; it's the Xfinity series. I, oh, this is Dylan's got to be his best track. So you, I, I have to take. I have to take him at thirty to one. Chase Elliott. I am counting on Chase Elliott to rebound this year. He's on my fantasy team. He was my second choice behind Ryan Blaney. I can't believe I have both Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott on my fantasy team. So I'm stoked about that. Elliott, 14 to 1. I think that's a pretty good price, you know, for Elliott, considering he's a fan favorite. Just three top fives out of 16. Two of those were runner ups, so that's good. Uh, look, he, he, he's been okay in these races. He, he's, he's pretty good at it. Uh, he's not great, but he's pretty good at it. Um,. He does have an Xfinity Series win. Take the two. Th I probably want him at 16 or 18. But like I said, he's a fan favorite. That's probably why he's 14. Um, it's a possibility. I, I'd probably say no because I have other drivers with better odds that I'd go with. But Elliot, maybe it's a, maybe it's one of those things that, you know, you can see the headline Chase Elliott, you know, wins the first Daytona 500 after a tumultuous 2023. But I don't know. I still think the odds are, are uh, that that's that's what's keeping me down. All right, uh, Gibbs, Ty Gibbs, and he's on my fantasy team this year. So Ty Gibbs, matter of fact, Eric has Ty Gibbs as who does he have Ty Gibbs as? Does he have Ty Gibbs as a sleeper? Yes, as his sleeper, his official sleeper, Ty Gibbs, and he's 28 to one. But take a look at his cup results. Not good. Never led a lap. Cannot take Ty Gibbs. And and you know what? He hasn't really done much in the Xfinity Series as well. This is just something he hasn't figured out yet. But we are expecting big things from Ty Gibbs this season. Uh, next up, Justin Haley. And if you're ever going to take Justin Haley, you're going to take him. Um, there's a couple different tracks. This is definitely one of them. Especially at 60 to 1. He's already got a win. Okay, and, and, and as you can see, he did on his very first appearance back in 2019. And if you look at overall his history, including the Xfinity Series, two more wins there. His average finish in seven starts in the Cup Series is 17.7. That is strong. So Justin Haley, you know what? I probably put him in there, to tell you the truth, with Dylan Stenhouse and with AJ, that he's a must-play at his odds every year in Daytona. Denny Hamlin, one of the co-favorites as well. He should be still one of the class drivers at Daytona. Look at that, 11 top fives and three wins in 36 races. Nobody's better as far as the stats are concerned. But the big but, over the last five, the average is 23.6. He's going through a bad stretch, and because of that, I can't take him at 10 to 1. Interesting enough, what did we say about Kyle Bush? Okay, we can go back to Kyle Bush in his last uh, nine races, his average 16.7. Now, and Bush has eight top fives, which isn't that bad. 
And we know Kyle Busch knows how to race at Daytona. Okay? But Denny's got three wins. And Denny's been a Daytona 500 champ in all three of those wins. Three-time Daytona 500 champ. But that last five average is the reason I got to stay away from him. Eric Jones. You know, we kind of felt Eric was uh, close to being a nice little comeback candidate last year. Uh, didn't go as well as we would have liked, but there were still signs. And that's why Jones is still somebody that could be a really good sleeper play this year. As far as this race, he's 25 to 1. He's got the win out of the 14. And if you could see overall, Jones, by the way, that was 2018 that win. A couple of negatives, though. He has not had a top five in his last nine. And his average finish at the track is 22.5. So not not the driver I'd go with this week, but 25 to 1 is a good number. Brett Keselowski, 11 to 1. Very nearly a co-favorite this week. And that just shouldn't be the case as far as I'm concerned. We know what his career has been at Talladega. He's been much better at Talladega than Daytona. He does have a win here, but four top fives out of 29. Uh, 11-01, one, one win. Now, he is coming off a runner-up, the very last Daytona race in August. But as you can see, it was his first top five since the win. The lone win at Daytona in 2016. I can't do it at 11-01. to one. Next up, Kyle Larson. And you know what I'm going to say about Kyle Larson. It just keeps going on. Every time we get to Talladega, Daytona, we see the low number. It's the low again at 12 to 1. It is just criminally insane that he's got the same odds as Ryan Blaney. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And we keep saying it's ridiculous every time. And every time we come back to the next race, he still doesn't have a top five. No top fives in 19 races. And... All you have to do is take a look at his history at Talladega, combine it with Daytona. The guy is just, is just terrible at these racetracks. There is no, honestly, he should be 22 to 1 at best. And I, I, I throw that number out there for a reason we'll get to a little bit later on. But you know what we're going to say about Kyle Larson. Look, if Kyle Larson wins. To me, it's like Ricky Stenhouse, Austin Sindrick, or Michael McDowell winning. The difference, you're only getting 12 to 1. Joey Logano, still very, very good at Daytona. One of the best. Eight top fives and a win. Surprisingly, that he only has one win. But Logano has his 500. That was back in 2015. And last season was a good season for him. Both top fives, including a runner-up. So Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney are 12 to 1, yet Kyle Larson 12 to 1? Come on. But yeah, Joey Logano is really hard to not go with, especially since he was strong last year. And I I, I just put him up there with Brian Blaney. I, I think he I think you I think he's see, I I'd go with Blaney, Logano. And uh, Kyle Busch, before I'd go, forget about Larson, but before I'd go with uh, Hamlin, just based on the way Hamlin has slumped recently at Daytona. Next up, Michael McDowell, the 21 500 champ at 35 to 1. But winning a second 500, I'm, I'm willing to bet that that's not just not going to happen. Ryan Priest, 40 to 1, just one top five out of eight. Yeah, Priest was very disappointing last season. Very disappointing. Uh, matter of fact, I think CJ had Ryan Priest last year. I know he did on his fantasy team, and it really wor it worked against him. Yeah, Ryan Priest just... Uh, now, d does he fit the trend of the last three winners? Absolutely. If, if anybody was going to win to follow that recent trend, Ryan Priest could be that guy. But I think the other guys just were better at Daytona. And so I would say no. I, Ryan Priest does not have a good enough history at Daytona for me to think that he's going to just 
pop into that winner's circle the, the way those other long shots did. Tyler Reddick, 28-1. to 1. I believe Eric has him in his championship four. Two top fives out of nine. Got a runner up. You are getting 28 to 1. That's the big difference here. That's 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 what would get you, or at least it does. It's the only thing that kind of gets me going. But I mean, look, I, I, I'm considering him. He had even though he wrecked five times out of nine, once again, but what it tells me is if he doesn't wreck. You know, he's been okay. Half the time, he doesn't wreck. He's in the top five. His average finish, 24.1. That's because of the wrecks. But how about this? He's got an Xfinity Series win at Daytona, and he has a cup, excuse me, a truck series win at Daytona. That means something. I think Reddick, a 28 to 1, is a play. He's a guy that, in my mind, kind of looks like those three long shots that have won here recently. And he's one of them. Ricky Stenhouse, 30 to 1. He's the defending champ, which is the reason why I can't take him in this one. So that'll open a spot, say, for like Tyler Reddick. So normally I would take Stenhouse, but I'll I'll, I'll take Reddick instead because I'm just going to bet against a back-to-back Daytona, uh, excuse me, yeah, back-to-back champion. I just, just can't see it. Daniel Suarez, this is not the week to take Daniel Suarez. 50-1 to 1 for a reason. Look at that. Just not good. Now, he was 7th in the 500 last year, so he's got that, but not good. Here's the guy that I was, um, when I was talking about Larson at 12-1, to this is the guy that, remember I said, well, I could see him at 22-1, to and this is why. Because, and I I said this last year, and you know what? Truex actually had a pretty good run last year uh in in, in, a, in in a few of these races super speedway races because he's not we know he's not a super speedway cup driver and yet i keep going back to his xfinity series days when he was awesome in these track on these tracks and i don't understand why he wasn't able to translate that so i know there's something there that's still simmering somehow that says yeah you know what i can i can see true x but look if Truex was 12 to 1 of course i'd be like no way 22 to 1 and now I'm like, yeah, why not? Now, I'm not saying I guarantee I'm taking him, but I'm just saying I, I, I will consider it at 22 to 1. He, and he does have two top fives. Should, should be two runner-ups out of those top fives, but 37 races, that's a lot. And the last driver on this list, and these, and we're going to go over this. Most of these guys that, are, that, that I talked about today, we will talk about every week, most of them. The guys that are not on this list will not be become drivers I'll be putting on this list until they start to show that they deserve to be. And I'll get into those drivers in just a bit. Bubba Wallace, 18 to one. Yes, I think he's a definite play. Very good at this track, as you know, with the four top fives and the three runner-ups. And you're still getting a pretty decent price on him. Anything less than that, and I'm balking, but I think 18 to one makes a lot of sense. And by the way, two of those runner-ups we're in the Daytona 500. Okay. Now, the other drivers that I left out this week, let me just see which ones uh, are worth mentioning. Well, Josh Berry's 45 to 1, first cup race. Uh, and he, But that, that's, that doesn't mean he can't win the 500. I mean, crazier things have happened. But he's never had a top 10 in five Xfinity Series races at Daytona. So that's the reason why I would say no, no, no. Corey LaJoy, we know he could pop up on these tracks every once in a while and do something. Out of 14 races, his average is 18.1, which is not totally bad. Um, John, uh, John Hunter Nemechek, first cup race, just one top five out of five in Xfinity Series at 60 to 1. Um, Gregson, he might be an interesting one, a sleeper in this race. Uh, he's been in three cups. Uh, Daytona races. One of those was a fifth place finish, and he has an Xfinity Series win. Gregson's another one of these drivers that I expect to have a rebound this year. His year was so awful last year. He had so much momentum over his last two years in Xfinity Series uh, that we expected a lot more, and then he had just so much turmoil last year that I expect bigger things from uh, Gregson this year. So he's 55-1. to Zane Smith, the big-time truck series uh, uh, racer, um, 
By the way, he won two truck races in Daytona and was 13th last year in his first and only trip to Daytona in the Daytona 500. That is pretty good. I think he's a play. I think he's one of those guys, one of those drivers that could do something special out of nowhere. He's 50 to 1. Uh, Burton's never had a top 10 in the Cup Series at this point. Hamrick has never had a top 10 in the Cup Series at this point. Um, Hamrick does have two top fives out of 11 in the Xfinity Series, but still not good enough for me at 90 to 1. And I think that's it. I think we've covered them all. So that is going to wrap it up. Uh, we did 40 minutes. Normally, I would think that's a good time because normally I would think that we'd get through on 30 minutes because there's a lot of intro and explaining what this is about and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I, I was, I'm happy with the 30 minutes that we should normally put together here. And like I said, as far as doing a live show, uh, that is something that I am uh, definitely considering. So let me know your thoughts on that. And... Um, as far as picks, let's go and show them. Here are our picks for the Daytona 500 for 2024. All right. That's going to wrap it up. 